Welcome to this episode of APIS Tech Tips, a series of short explainer excerpts from real APIS training courses. This episode goes through all the most important concepts used in NFV, and it comes from the course NFV Mano in an hour. Enjoy! What we want is to be able to virtualize the network functions that were previously not virtualized. To do this, we create VNFs, virtualized network functions. So um, previously, we had network functions, uh, which is you know physical things. You buy them, you unpack them from a box. You can drop them on your toes, and then you pick them up, and you put them in a rack somewhere in a data center, and you configure it, and then put cables in, and so on. Virtualized network functions is based completely on standard virtualization. So a VNF is the virtual version of a previously non-virtualized network function. This all runs in the NFVI, the NFV infrastructure, because that's where we have the real hardware resources. The real hardware resources come in this the holy trinity of compute, um, sorry, of, of cloud computing resources, which is usually divided into compute, storage, and a network, like so. And then we have technology to virtualize these things. Sometimes you will see a big box that just says virtualization or virtualization layer or something like that. Uh, I think that's um, a little bit fooling the audience because the technology to virtualize uh, server is very different from the technology used to virtualize a hard drive or a switch or a router or a cable. So that's why we like to separate these things. <clears throat> we want to manage these things from somewhere. So we have the good old OSS BSS, that's the operations and business support systems. Uh, so from here, we will want to be able to create VNFs running as virtual machines or containers in the NFVI. How do we do this? Well, we can manage them by like normal OSS BSS surveillance maintenance. Uh, if you can't do that directly to the VNF, there's something called an element manager or EM that can sit as sort of a translation function, if you will. But note here that the EM, the element manager, is not a mandatory function to have. You can live without um, an EM at all. What you can't live without is the MANO, the subject of this talk. And the MANO sits over here. That's the management and orchestration of the NFE architecture. MANO has become a word, so you pretty much never say, oh, let's look into the management and orchestration box. Uh, you say, look over in the MANO box. So you say, we're going to have a MANO meeting this afternoon to discuss what MANO software we're going to use. There are some MANO providers here to sell their stuff to us. And we'll have a, a little MANO chat after that to discuss which MANO to choose. So MANO really has become just a word unto its own. Uh, inside MANO, there are no less than three different functions. Starting from the bottom, we have the Vim, which is the Virtual Infrastructure Manager, which is the only one that talks to NFVI. So it's the one that actually sends commands to start and stop virtual machines, to, uh, to mount uh, storage to those virtual machines, to create virtual networks with virtual switches or things like that. So that's the Vim. That's the lowermost part. We take one step up, we come to the VNF Manager, which, which is a pretty good name, actually. It, do, it does what it says on the tin. It manages VNFs. So typically, the thought is that if you buy a VNF, which is previously when you bought a network function, you bought something physical. You, know, you put it in the back of your car, and you rode it over to the data center and installed it. Now you essentially buy software. You download the software or you buy a disk with that software. Um, that's what the VNF actually consists of. But the idea is that you also get a VNF manager with that VNF. Because this VNF manager knows its VNF very well. So it knows how to handle it, how to start it, how to stop it, how to scale it to make it bigger or smaller, how to heal it if it starts acting up. 
you can have a generic VNF manager that can send these basic commands, you know, start, stop. But if you want to have a more uh, uh, specific handling of your VNF, you know, if you're going to make it bigger, you need to start increasing this particular little function up in this corner before you then increase this little function down there in that corner. These are things that wouldn't be known by a generic VNF manager, but it could be known by a VNF specific VNF manager. Um, and it also has an interface to the uh, element manager here that will come into play a little bit later in this presentation, but we won't discuss the element manager that much at all in this presentation. We're going to focus over here on Mano. So we can have several VNF managers, as it says here, plural, and you can see in the picture here that we have several to cover our different VNFs. And finally, on top sits the boss, the NFVO, the NFV orchestrator. The NFV orchestrator is the only one that talks to OSS BSS up there, and it does uh, orchestration, which is a word that means higher level management, like largely automatic management. It handles large complex system and not so much the details in those systems. So whereas the Vim down here knows about virtual machines and containers, it does not know how they together form VNFs. The VNF manager knows which virtual machines and containers uh, comprise a particular VNF. But it does not know how those VNFs form together to build a larger network service. The orchestrator knows about network services, knows how VNFs uh, connect together. So I mentioned a few, uh, a few uh, like terms, objects that we can play around with, VNFs and network services. Those are very important. Before we move on to talk about which objects we can play around with in the NFV playground, let's just note here that these lines have names. And that can be useful if you want to find out from a standard what goes on here or what goes on up there, for instance. I've been in the telecommunication training business for two decades now, and it has always been a little bit vague and mysterious to tell interfaces from reference points. To me, those two things have always been fairly similar and largely interchangeable, almost sometimes completely synonymous. And the standards that I, that I uh, have read have really not made great distinction between the two. Etsy really do uh, distinguish between them in the NFV papers. So these lines are reference points. These names that are on these lines are names of reference points. Those reference points can then offer a number of interfaces. And just to give you an idea, all these reference points here offer somewhere between five and ten interfaces, or some a few more, let's say between five and fifteen interfaces. Uh, so it's not, and none of them have just one, and none of them have a thousand, so somewhere between five and fifteen. Uh, those interfaces are essentially just groups of commands that fit together. So maybe uh, up here there are commands, the, the group of commands that onboards things. Maybe then there's another group of commands that manages those onboarded things. Those would be two different interfaces. Um, so these reference points hosts uh, one or more interfaces. So that we can play around in here with things like physical network functions, we need that for, for legacy reasons. Ah, it's good coffee. Um, PNFs are just the good old network function, the one that you unpack from a cardboard box and can then drop on your toe. But they won't go away, so we, we need to still 
keep them in our infrastructure. VNFs is the new virtual version of a PNF. So that's a virtualized network function. And then we have network services, which uh, combine PNFs and VNFs. In order to do that, uh, physical network functions have connection points. VNFs have connection points. Network services have connection points, although they're not called connection points. They're called service access points, but they are. For all intents and purposes, they are exactly connection points. You know, Data-wise, they are pretty much identical. And finally, we can uh, connect these connection points with virtual links inside virtualized network functions, inside VNFs. And inside network services, we also have virtual links. So we have VNF virtual links and network service virtual links. If you enjoyed this APIS Tech Tip, check out the full APIS course NFV Mano in an hour, where this video came from. This course uses as a starting point the main Etsy NFV architecture with its building blocks and then focuses its attention on the management and orchestration or Mano functions. To check this course out in more detail and all our other training, just visit us on www.apistraining.com.